Welcome to Grim Memoirs. Nothing can seem dire and more chilling than being lost at sea, right? Imagine being aboard a ship that will have this fate. Imagine heading towards the blackest sea, the sheer terror of the unknown, the unavoidable feeling of angst and hopelessness. How about being stranded in a kingdom of ice and nothingness, with no way to leave nor remain, perishing day by day while slowly freezing to death? I reckon that sounds like a narrative straight out of a horror film. I wanted to go skiing! Well, in most cases, these tales are just that, cinematic exaggerations, although our inquisitive preternatural lover spirits always prefer to hang on to the possibility of their existence and its implications. The subject of today's memoir seeks to explore how ghost ship stories indeed come to be, how much the intentional human instigation of such fiction contributes, and also evaluate one of the most notorious phantom ship tales of probably the last two centuries. The term ghost ship or phantom ship stands for a vessel that wanders on open waters aimlessly without a living crew. There is much to folklore and legend nuances that surround this term, but in most cases the stories that inspire or enliven the lore are real-life stories and actual human experiences. The story of Schooner Jenny is certainly an eerie one, but the information related to her voyage, her grim fate and what really happened to the crew are all shrouded with a lens of mystery and lack of documentation, and indeed very little is known about Jenny. The story of her unearthing goes like this. In 1862, in a German geographical magazine titled Globus, the story of a whaling ship named Hope was published, reporting of its voyage in the now infamous Drake Passage in Antarctica on September 22, 1840. Hope had been stationed there to work in the icy cold conditions when its crew members suddenly spotted a ship popping up from the gap between two giant icebergs. At first sight, they also noticed seven men who appeared to be standing on the main deck of this peculiar ship. When the Hope's crew boarded the weather-worn vessel, they allegedly recognized her to be the unfortunate schooner Jenny from the Isle of Wight. They called out to the men on the main deck but soon found out that they were frozen solid as if they had been under the claws of the iciest and chilliest winter storm. Despite that, the bodies were almost too well preserved and looked like they had been just recently frozen. Captain Brighton of the whaling ship Hope went below the deck to the ship's bridge. He spotted who appeared to be Jenny's captain, sitting at his desk and writing the ship's log, and called out to him. There was no answer, obviously, because Jenny's captain was frozen solid just as all his crew members were. Captain Brighton took the ship's log in his hands, where he read the last entry. May 4th, 1823 no food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. He also read in the logbook that Jenny had left her home port in the Isle of Wight in 1822. The last port Jenny had visited was Calo, Peru. Captain Brighton allegedly took the logbook with him to return it to the ship's owners in the UK upon his return. He then continued exploring below deck and arrived at the captain's quarters where he stumbled upon a most sorrowful sight. Lying on the bed, he noticed the captain's wife who was still petting their dog, both frozen solid in their perpetual oniric tomb. Accounts are divided over what the Hope crew did next. Some say they buried the bodies at sea, saying prayers in their honor, others that they didn't dare to disturb them but left them as they were, a frozen crew on a frozen vessel. With all this I just narrated, and although this story was even included in reference works on the history of Antarctica, Neither a Captain Brighton nor the corresponding ships could be found in any official documentation. Jenny's story sounds like it comes straight out of the most nightmarish ghostly scenario, especially if one is to imagine how long she wandered out at sea, before allegedly resurfacing and being spotted in 1840. The very thought of this frozen solitary ship, roaming the waters that bond the Atlantic with the Pacific Ocean for more than two decades, is enough to send chills down your spine. Where has it been? What things has Jenny seen? Nonetheless, one's analytic rationale will eventually point out this story as overly dramatized and possibly not true at all. 
With that being said, we do have documentation of the article from the Globus magazine, and according to the Cambridge University Press, also of the existence of its English translation a century later. Since then, Jenny's story has made its appearance and reappearance in the published written media many times, without ever truly answering the questions whether it did exist at all. According to Polar Records article, German geographer and publicist Karl T. Andre, who also happens to be the editor of the illustrated periodical Globus, might have linked several events together in need of exciting stories to attract new readers. It's very probable Jenny's story might have gotten jumbled with stories of other missing ships of the period, which makes discerning between what is factual and what isn't very difficult. And in order to shed some light on the veracity of Jenny and her fate, we need to examine a real-life case of two missing ships and the chilling circumstances of their demise. This takes us back to the ill-fated story of British Royal Navy officer and explorer Sir John Franklin and his two ships that became lost at sea, namely HMS Erebus and Terror. They set sail from Britain to King William Island, what is now Nunavut in northern Canada, on May 1845, in hopes of finding and charting the final part of the Northwest Passage, the seaway that links the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans via waterways through the Canadian Arctic archipelago. On 28 July 1845, the two ships were spotted by a whaler in Baffin Bay, waiting for ice to clear in Lancaster Sound and to recommence their journey to the Bering Strait. This would be the last time any of the 129 crewmen were seen alive. The exact circumstances of their deaths remain uncertain to this day. In 1859, the sole piece of paper that revealed anything about what happened was discovered. It is often known as the Victory Point Note. In the margins of this standard admiralty form was a handwritten message which stated that the ships had been deserted on 22 April 1848, having been stuck in the ice since 12 September 1846. 105 officers and crew, under the command of Captain F. R. M. Crozier, had departed on foot for the Back River. The note confirmed that John Franklin had died on 11 June 1847. HMS Erebus and Terror's Rex resurfaced on 2014 and 2016 respectively by Parks Canada in collaboration with Inuit communities. As we've seen, the events that unfolded between these two ships might have helped in creating the narrative of ghost ship tales, and even though their demise happens decades later than the alleged Jenny's journey, they still contribute in thinning the veil between real-life so-called ghost ship stories from made-up ones, and also simply stand as substance material for supernatural enthusiasts with a publishing medium advantage. But as much as a good ghost ship story captivates and interests us all, it isn't in the least fair to all the lost souls to whom this fate befalls to twirl these events for one's own profit or for simply entertaining an audience of readers. It is certainly undisputable that real-life events are those that inspire and always will spill into the vast cauldron of supernatural phenomena, superstition and folklore. And these stories will always continue to instill even further our creations in art, painting, music and filmmaking. And finally, I guess this video's objective is to bring to light this issue concerning the fabricating of these events for one's sole materialistic purposes, when the string between the factual world and the elusive nature of the paranormal is already fluctuating as it is. As always, thank you for watching.